John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be looking at and reviewing some uh, pre-painted uh, terrain from Micro Art Studios. So Micro Art, uh, Micro Art Studios reached out to me about uh, reviewing some of their products, and I said, sure, sure. Um, they sent me these, just so you know, uh, I did not pay for them. They, they sent me these as review copies. Um, they do know, and you guys know though, that I do give you just my honest opinion um, on the products and uh, you know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. So I'm looking forward to it though. Just the images that I see on the instructions and the package uh, makes me very excited for this product. And really you can never have too much terrain for uh, you know games like Team Yankee or Flames of War, your 15 millimeter scale. All right, so I got a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna kind of show you what was sent, kind of what it looks like, and then uh, we're gonna assemble some stuff, come back and give you some final thoughts. So uh, this is the Normandy garage and factory. So you kind of see it in scale with some, you know, 15 millimeter uh, miniatures. And you can kind of see what it looks like. They also have the assembly instructions on the back. This is laser cut MDF, I'm assuming. So this is that uh, product and you can kind of see, we'll open it up in a minute. The excellent uh, kind of printing on here that's done. I don't know if they print and then laser cut. I imagine that's how they do it, but I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, it looks, uh, Looks pretty good if you ask me. Then we've got uh, the Normandy restaurant. I like how you can see how your teams can go inside there. Looks like the interiors are decorated as well, which is something you always want. Um, so I like that they give you that example. Pretty cool stuff. So I got the restaurant, that's number two. We have townhouse, uh, townhouse number one, and we've got you know, it kind of shows you some of the stuff, what it looks like. So these are kind of small, but um, pretty cool. Then we've got Normandy House 2, kind of a bigger house. I just like the kind of the distressed exterior. Normandy Townhouse 3. Looks like two more kind of standard houses. These kind of look like maybe your typical battlefront building size. I do have a battlefront building that we can uh, compare. Uh, then we have the Normandy Cafe is the last one that they sent me. Um, again, looks like a couple buildings. We see the infantry inside. Assembly looks pretty straightforward. Again, laser cut. Overall though, um, you know, as a, as a package goes and presentation, I really like it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. You know, this is a very niche product, 15 millimeter wargaming, and there are several competitors out there that are in the space, have come and gone. So it'll be interesting to see how these compare. I think, I don't know if it's the gold standard, but the standard would be, um, you know, the Battlefront or Gale Force 9 uh, buildings that are designed for Team Yankee, or sorry, Flames of War. This you could play, uh, use in Team Yankee too, because, you know, if you're playing in Europe, some of these buildings have been there, you know, over a hundred years, so you could, you could do that. Uh, but anyway, so the rest of the plan is we're gonna go off and I'm gonna build one. Uh, I think my wife actually saw this and was kind of excited to build one. So we're gonna build some of these, um, then I'll come back with my opinion on the build uh, how long it took, and then actually look at it in comparison to some of my miniatures so you can get an idea of uh, some scale. And of course, my final thoughts. So we'll see you in just a moment. For you, it was only a moment. For me, it was a week of building buildings. And now I'm back to give you my unfettered and honest opinion about these new micro art studio uh, World War II buildings. So as you saw, they sent me a whole bunch of them and uh, it took me a while to build them. Uh, there were several sets that they sent and each one I would say probably took um, at least a couple of hours to assemble. And I'll talk a little bit more about that 
later but uh, just wanted to let you know that that's uh, there is a, a time commitment to this that you don't experience when you um, you know use like say Battlefront um, Gale Force 9 houses which are pre-painted so let's go ahead and start with uh, some of the buildings now this first one we're gonna look at is the Normandy townhouse number two and we see an example of it here just to kind of show you the instructions uh, they're pretty straightforward and then this is the completed building this one I would say of all the packages was probably one of the faster ones to do just because it didn't have any weird shapes and it was just uh, a single building several of these had multiple uh, buildings in them um, but you can kind of see the detail cornices the shutters this did come with different options as far as shutters so i chose the green or i should say my wife chose the green uh, rather than the brown which i think is in the um, ad here you can see the brown so it is nice that they give you uh, options like that i guess actually this isn't that building is it no Let's start all that over again, shall we? All right, I'm back. It was only a moment uh, for you guys. It was about a week for me. Uh, it took about two hours to build each one of these. This was the first one I built. This is the Normandy uh, restaurant. And it was, um, you know, I thought it looked pretty cool and got some unique things about it um, that made me want to build it first uh, also I got to thank my uh, wife uh, she punched out all of the little cardboard pieces for all of the buildings and organized them for me while I was building it's one of the things she she likes doing she likes punching out uh, tokens she also likes those fidget poppers um, so if you have a, a wife that likes that maybe uh, include her it was nice we we kind of sat at the dining room table building these uh, over a week and uh, it was a lot of fun so like I said this one took two hours actually I want to say this one took closer to three hours because uh, I discovered a mistake of my own doing and assembling and I will obviously share that with you guys uh, but let's take a look at the completed uh, building now I like these because they are the pre paints are really neat um, they have lots of character to them and texture to them and and this slots on there so you can put put infantry in there it's got this little back entry cute little doors window frames different color window frames this building actually came with some options some different ways you could assemble it um, but we went with kind of the basic I really um, like this one like I said I think it's really cool looking and you can disassemble it for uh, play so you can take off the roof and it does have kind of pre-printed texture on the floor but not the inside walls and then that one can come off and you have that floor um, these do take a little bit to slot together so you do have to be kind of careful when you slot them together the I made this so I could I didn't glue one side down so I could actually get in here but um, so you could actually put troops on the third floor if you wanted to I figured that made sense since there's actually windows up here and a stairwell um, I, I glued that one side so I figured you'd put the guys in on this side that way the roof still has some stability and as you saw this could be removed so you can put some troops in there uh, but again yeah I, this is a, a decent size uh, building uh, especially for flames of war and I'm probably gonna be using these for flames of war and team Yankee um, you know I know it's Normandy themed but you know maybe the, the Soviets will We'll get to France and you can fight in these buildings but uh, again the the 
Pre-paint's awesome. Now, what did I do? My boneheaded move. They ship these with a plastic film or a paper film over the painted parts. And we didn't realize it at first. We assembled half of this building with the protective paper still on all the pieces. Even though in the instructions it says remove the protective cover, um, I missed that little blurb and assembled it and then was like, boy, this really doesn't look like the picture at all. It looks so plain. And then realized my boneheaded mistake and uh, uh, pulled, all, pulled all of it apart. So that's why this one took a little bit longer because of my own um, mistakes. But there you go. So that is the um, Normandy restaurant. Now let's look at the next one. We've got their townhouse number three, which is actually two buildings. It's this one, and it is this one. Both pretty cool. Both pretty much the, the same exact thing. You get uh, the actual houses in different colors, the roofs, and then you could pick and choose the, the shutters and doors for different colors. I think there were four options for colors on this one. Um, so that if you buy two packs of them, you know, each house could be unique, I suppose. And then same thing, you've got uh, pre-printed floors, walls are just a plain MDF. Same thing. And then I only glued one side so you could get your infantry in there. Again, because there was a window here in the, the roof, so... And when I see this kind of window, I think of a Bridge Too Far movie where the little family was counting the German stuff as it strolled by from their top window. But maybe that's just me. All right, so that's uh, Normandy Townhouse number three. We also have Townhouse number two, which is kind of their, maybe their biggest one. Bam. Um, and again, you have some options for shutters. This one does have a little entryway in the back. And again, just like the, uh, just like the other ones. Okay. So that's uh, townhouse, townhouse two. Then we have the garage and factory. Then we have the, I guess that's the factory and that's the garage. So these are kind of cool because they are, um, you know, they're not houses. They're kind of uh, gives your, your little tabletop city some industrial things. Now you could set these up for the doors to open and close. Um, I find that a little fiddly with the joints that they provided. So I'm probably going to end up just gluing them. But again, you don't have to. But really cool, really cool stuff. You can kind of see factory floor. This one's roof is a little bit different than the other ones. But still, you can kind of see. Look at that gorgeous pre-paint. I like how, you know, a lot of these flat pack woodcut buildings um, look like woodcut buildings. They look like flat squares, but these have enough layers and, you know, architectural details on them that it goes a long way to hiding the fact that it's constructed that way. You can kind of see some of that there. <clears throat> Cool stuff. Okay, so that's the garage and factory. Then we have, just from the cuteness factor, might be my favorites, which is the townhouse. Either the townhouse or the um, restaurant. But those come in a single pack with two, kind of like townhouse number three, I think it was. Um, and you know, they have advertisement on the side. Just great. I mean, look at that weathering pattern. Just fantastic. Different color window frames. 
These come with little walls and sheds or outhouses. So you could set it up like that. These are also designed, you know, with the front and back, you have these windows that are, have window sills and things protruding, but the sides are always flat. So you could, you know, have your, your city, have your buildings against each other, which is kind of cool. Oh, wait, I'm robbing you guys. This is just the top floor. I'm like, where are the doors? I picked them up and left the doors behind. Oh, that one goes there. This one goes there. There we go. A little bit taller now. But still the same concept. Really cool buildings, like I said, though. Then I think the last one that was still a work in progress, and that's the restaurants. Uh, just like the townhouses, you get two of these. These are pretty square. Uh, they do have different, um, like, types of businesses that you could put like signs and you can see that the inside but each set has you know they're not just all just plain old rectangles a lot of them are very rectangle like but they um, let's get this out of the way they give you enough variety here that you can really have fun with it You've got a lot of choices. All right, how does this compare to um, the miniatures and size-wise? Let's grab a couple miniatures and take a look. All right, we got a Sherman tank. You can kind of see, in theory, you can actually fit in the factory, which is kind of cool. You got infantry, give you an idea of the layout in the house. Yeah, it looks like you could probably fit maybe three infantry stands in here. One, two, three. So, scale-wise, they look they look really nice. All right, let's compare it to some competitors uh, because you know when you're considering something like this, there are some other folks out in the same space. I guess the first and foremost thing would be. Uh, Battlefront itself and their uh, terrain in a box pre-paints. So this, I've had this for a while and this is probably the closest analogy to it in the Micro Art Studio uh, line. So you can kind of see, um, you know, they are, these ones are a little bit bigger and, but they are, um, you know, functionally the same kind of building. Now, this is made out of like a resin or plaster or something like that. And it's pretty sturdy. I've had this one for 10 years. You can see a little uh, paint loss there. But, you know, that looks just like natural weathering. Uh, occasionally these things will chip, but they're pretty solid. Um, so durability wise, um, you know, this is going to trump this, but this has more details. It has window sills. It actually has, you know, frames you can see through. I don't know if you can see that there, but these windows are see through. Um, so it's pretty, uh, you know, detail wise. I like that better. Now, um, playability wise, you'll notice there is some slop here when these things slide, but otherwise these are pretty easy to take apart. Uh, you can see the inside of that. Um, and pretty easy to put together. They just kind of stack. Super easy. Uh, these are a little bit more fiddly to stack and depending on which kit, uh, some are a little bit more fiddly than others, but most of them have retaining um, parts that just slot into the wall that make it pretty easy. Some of them are a snug fit when you first um, first assemble it, but as you use it, I'm sure it'll, um, you know, it'll all work its way out. 
But yeah, so to compare these two, really, you know, these are, this was close to the same price, if not the same price as one set of, I believe, two of these. Uh, this comes pre-painted, so you open up the box, you plop it on the table, and you're good to go. Whereas these you do have to assemble, and it took me, like I said, about two hours to build both of these buildings. Uh, maybe a little bit longer with both buildings, but uh, the end result, I think, is better. And I think your mileage is going to vary. Some people, I think, are going to hate the fact that you can see this, which is the edge of the MDF or particle board or whatever they're using as the material. Um, some people that will drive crazy. Uh, but I'm not one of those people. I kind of really like it. I think it looks cool. Um, the other thing is uh, 3D printing. I found this uh, online and I don't know, I thought it was a cute little building with the garage thing in it and it also comes apart uh, and I like it. 3D printing your terrain is an option for games like Flames of War. Now what's the trade-off between buildings like this? Well, you know, you're either going to have to get lucky and seek out a free one or purchase uh, the STL files and then you're going to, you know, spend the time and the money in filament, but that's pretty much a drop in the bucket if you already have a 3D printer. So this is uh, argumentatively cheaper than the MicroArt Studio stuff, but the trade-off is, yes, uh, you know, after eight hours or whatever it took to print this, I have a house, but it, it, this might take me an hour to paint, or two hours to paint. This took me an hour, you know, a couple hours to build. So what I would invest in painting here, I invested in assembly here, and I think it's a nice trade-off. I, I could not do that with paint easily or quickly, uh, like that, that side stuff. So again, it's an option to throw out there, and you could have some really great terrain using stuff, searching for stuff like this, but it's a much more, uh, you know, hobby intensive you're going to have to do your research find your files print it paint it yourself um so you know you have that the other option is well i guess it's not an option anymore this a friend actually had a uh, laser cutting company and made some normandy-esque buildings and this was one my wife painted probably 10 years ago but again shows you this is also made out of wood uh and it's, it's pretty cool, but there are options out there. So I think what's nice about the micro arts studio stuff that we're seeing here is it's kind of a, a nice in-between. Between you have the absolute simplest, which is going to be ultimately more expensive. Battlefront, you know, Gale Force 9, Battlefield in a Box stuff, which I do love. I mean, their terrain and stuff, uh, this is great. Their Team Yankee stuff I love. And then you've got the 3D printed, do everything yourself route. And then you've got kind of the micro art studio stuff right here in the middle. It's, um, you know, it's, it's more work than this, obviously, but it's going to be a lot less work than, than printing out your own stuff. And, you know, after a couple hours, you've got a, a functional game piece on your battlefield. Uh, overall, I really like uh, the MicroArt Studio stuff. You will be seeing it in battle reports, and ultimately, that's going to be the, the test of terrain, is if you see it a lot. Um, as we play with it, I'll probably revisit this, let you know if I encounter any problems or frustrations. Um, uh, the only thing I might n notice right now is just kind of, again, the... Um, the floors locking together they don't go together quite as easily as the battlefront ones but battlefront ones are super simple that way but that said the more you use them the more they will uh, the more easy it will get to put them together and I do like that you can stack them together make one big long street if you wanted to and that's pretty cool. 
Yeah, so a uh, big shout out and thanks to Micro Art Studio for sending me these samples. Again, uh, even though I'm uh, singing the praises, I do realize that this is for a particular type of, of gamer and it's not going to apply to everybody. Um, but for someone like me, I really enjoyed it. The actual construction of this was very fun. I mean, I had a good time. The kits weren't so complicated that you just felt like you were drowning, but they were, um, you know, uh, complicated enough that you had a little, like, mini puzzle challenge on your hands. So it was a lot of fun to build, and I'm really looking forward to getting these on the table and throwing down with some, uh, some Germans in Normandy and seeing if I can free France. All right, guys, well, there you go. Thanks if you watched to the end. I appreciate it. Sometimes I can get a little long-winded about stuff that I like. And obviously, I, I'm enjoying this stuff quite a bit. You will see it again in a battle report soon, and probably many others. So do be on the lookout for that. As always, I do appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot, and keep on gaming.